Hello there, Steve. What are you playing with? The brand new Mousing Field action. Mousing Field. Conglomeration of Mauser, Remington, and Springfield. You got the old extractor cloth. You got positive feed, the positive extractor. Extract. Look how long the extractor is right there. It's yeah. like almost a quarter of the rim. Yeah. There's a lot less wear and tear on the rim. Well, and it's positive feed too. When the round picks the round up, yeah. it feeds it up right there. Yeah. My, my uh, pre-64 Model 70 has the same thing. That's one of the same actions, right? This has a different coating on it. Huh. Interesting. American Rifle Company. All right, they've got a very interesting action here he's going to tell us about. All right, go ahead. All right, for your rail mount, we have a, we have a key, a tapered key it's cut into the top of the receiver. So there's two degree taper on each side. And then a corresponding taper the slot on the underside of the rail. So you butt up against these hard stops here. And then when you draw it down with these bolts, these are off-the-shelf bolts, when you draw it down, it's an interference fit. Now, I just did that quick squeeze by hand. It takes a little, it can come apart, but it takes a little work. If we were to take the other one and pull the bolts out, you're not gonna be able to get that out by hand. That's as rock solid as an integral rail, but it allows you to change the inclination. You know, a lot of people start with 20s, and you get a better scope, and you want a 40 or a 45. Mm -hmm. So it's up to you, you can change this out later. So it, uh, it utilizes a... Here, brother. Ricola. Yeah, I've got some. Stuff. All right. I'll take that, though. Oh, I'll take it. More. Do it. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Oh, party foul. Somebody get the man the Ricola, please. Yeah. You have control around feeding. As soon as you strip the round from the magazine, you have control over it. So if you ever have to short stroke it, you're not going to leave it in the chamber and run the risk of double feeding. It also is a large claw. You're gripping nearly a quarter of the circumference of the case head. And it doesn't rotate with the bolt. Meaning, you know, when, you, when, you chain, when you're locking down that bolt, your, your extractor isn't rotating around the brass and digging into it's your case head. It's cutting the brass up. Exactly. Mine does that now, yep. Yep. And it also has the Springfield style ejector, which is an inertial driven rotating piece of hardened steel on a shoulder bolt pivot. So when you draw it back, it cams that steel into a slot in the bolt face. So it's up to the user how far you want to fling the brass. You can do it nice and soft like that, or you can hit it hard and send it flying. And unlike a standard Remington bolt, where you have it right at the uh, face of the bolt, right at the, at the side of the ground zero of an explosion, this one's all the way back here. There's no springs involved. It's a flawless system that, I mean, this literally can't do anything except cam into that slot, so it's never going to fail you. Hmm. And how much do you sell these for? 1600 for a right-handed right, right -handed version, 17 for a lefty. Okay. We've got right-handed short actions in stock. We can, get, <coughs> we can get them out in two to three weeks. Really? Does that come uh, with one left, rail? Sorry? Sorry, does that come with one rail? Yeah, so when you order, you'll specify left or right-handed, uh, short action or long action, inclination of rail, uh, bolt face size. We offer three sizes, uh, 474, 538, and 589, you know, what, what cartridge you shoot. And the bolt heads are interchangeable. For $400, you can buy a second bolt head and extractor, and you can make that multi-caliber. Very cool. And, and what's your uh, lead time on a long action? We're gonna say right now, probably about four months. We gotta get the tooling up and running. We're gonna, that's basically the next thing to get done once we get back from SHOT Show. Okay. So it has uh, 1 and 1 16th by 20 inch threads, which fit like an uh, off the shelf Savage small shank barrel, or some variant of that. So you can do the barrel and lock nut method. You can do that yourself at home if you wish. Or you can do what most of us do is we send them out to a gunsmith and have them cut the barrel. Very cool. With most of the guys building the with AI 
MX and Alpha MX. Yeah. Everything for a Remington 700. So the footprint is all Remington 700, Remington 700 triggers, all that stuff. Everything but the barrels. We need to go with a larger thread pitch on the barrels just to be able to utilize the mouse extractor. Pretty cool. So one thing I didn't talk about was the toroidal bolt lugs. <coughs> the bearing surface of the lug is shaped like a torus, like think of like an O-ring or a donut. And the corresponding surface inside the action there. It's true. It's a black action. Black action. This one's a little easier to see. You can see that surface in there. Okay. Now, what makes these great is they require no lap, regardless of what bolt you put. Any of these bolts, any of these guns can go in any other receiver. And with the toroidal lugs and the spherical surface, they're insensitive to movement. You know, in a bolt action, when you cock it, the back end is raised slightly. So then you have to lap flat lugs. When that back end is raised, you get face-to-face -face separation. So you lap the lugs until that material is removed, and you get that again. And it works. It's labor intensive. And that bolt and that receiver are now married to each other. Whereas with these, they don't require lapping. Like I said, any bolt, any receiver, you're going to get that contact all the way around. Now, you can get that same thing from a floating bolt head, like some of the savages use. But because you have this uh, claw type extractor, which is essentially a spring, that would bias the bolt. So you can't use a floating bolt head with a claw type extractor. Gotcha. Somebody did a lot of thinking to put that together. That would be Ted Courageous, president of the Rifle Company, all his design, with obviously an assist from Paul Mauser and Rupert Spring Food. Very cool. Very cool. Sure. 135. Three four zero. So with that thing, you're four one two. Do you leave it like that? That's my mobile phone. Nope. And then you uh, have a six one two. Yep. Yeah, I'm probably, so this has just been uh, beat loss action. I'm probably going to do right. DLC and yep. matches that. Okay. And then, uh, action configuration? Yep. Alright. Full kind of scope, 34. So American Rifle Company, they've got a uh, really sexy looking mount here as well. Let's talk about that. So this is the QDL version. We also offer standard rings. The design of the mounting surface and the scope and the rings is identical for both. It's just a QDL. So, especially something like a QDL, you really care about return to zero. But if you are clamping on the sides, the angles of a Picatinny, regardless of how perfect you make your part, you're at the mercy of whoever made the rail. Okay. What Ted came up with was a way to eliminate that and define exactly where the where the mount is going to sit on the rail. And you do that by three-pointing it. So essentially you have a crown surface here and here, and then a third here, and then a radius to get away from those edges because we don't want to touch those edges. So what that means is three points defines position. So when you set it on a rail, it can only exist in one state. Those two are hard down, and this one is hard over on the underside of the Picatinny. That's the only position this can exist in. Whereas, if you were grabbing on the sides, not opposing angles of the Picatinny, one time you might get these two surfaces, the next time you might get those two surfaces. Or you might even just get line contact. So, this will return to zero every time because it can only exist in one location on a given round. Now, up top with the rings, we have a hinged clamshell design. Keep doing your thing, I'll get it. Now, with traditional type of uh, scope rings, you have a bottom piece and you have a saddle on top. And the problem with that is you can't torque all the bolts at the exact same time. So when you start to torque one of the sides, that top saddle moves down and into your scope, bars your scope tube, and it rotates your scope. With this clamshell design, when you bolt it through here with one big quarter-inch bolt, 
you get equal and opposite pressure on your scope tube, those two force factors cancel each other out, and there's no perceptible rotation on your scope. Flip the bolt, and it becomes And then we torque these down to, we recommend 50 inch pads. So your scope is not moving anywhere, and we've never seen marring from these rings. Very cool. And how, do, how would a, a shooter get a hold of you to uh, place an order? You can go to our website, AmericanRifle.com. Uh, we've got lots of, uh, lots of rings in stock. And you've got them in 35 millimeter, 34 millimeter? Yep, all the diameters you would expect. Inch, 30, 34, 35, 40. Um, but, uh, different heights from 20 up to 36 depending on diameter. Obviously you don't want a large diameter and a small height. What's the price point on them? 180 and then for a pair of rings. That, we have 300 for a QDL mount. Know, and the, the rings don't obviously come with the level. Correct. This does have a level built in. There's a built in level on the QDL and hand knobs with a uh, spring loaded washer on the back side to give it positive pressure once it's tight, tightened down so it doesn't go off. Awesome. But if you're shooting a large caliber and really want to crank it down, you can always stick the wrench in there and give it a little extra torque. And it bears again. Awesome. We recommend 50 inch pounds on both of these screws. Not on the not necessarily. Very, very cool. I'm impressed.